Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and in today's video we will be talking about the INFP's many different developments, taking a look at the cognitive functions and the cognitive function hierarchies. And I have developed personalized cognitive function hierarchies for the INFP. So you might have a unique development that changes which functions you use as an INFP. And I know the traditional definition of an INFP, of the modern INFP, is a person with a certain cognitive function stack. We have first introverted feeling, FI, then extroverted intuition, NE, then introverted sensing, SI, and then extroverted thinking, TE. And the traditional view is look at yourself and how you act and how you think and measure how much you use each of these cognitive functions. So the INFP is described to have to 100% introverted feeling. People say if you're an INFP you always have introverted feeling no matter the situation or the circumstance. Then secondly you have extroverted intuition at the 75% rate. And then after that, to balance that, you have introverted sensing as the tertiary. And finally, you have extroverted thinking as the inferior. So what you are struggling the most with in yourself, extroverted thinking. What you have at your best, introverted feeling. So uh, what uh, your auxiliary function is, your co-pilot, extroverted intuition. And your inner child of sorts, the three-year-old, <laughs> introverted sensing. Sorry, the ten-year-old, better described. Now, I don't believe this is accurate, and I will explain why. And after seeing this video, I don't think you will think so either. Because I believe how much you use a cognitive function, a certain frame of thinking, is up to your development. Take the Enneagram test, take different tests, explore how you developed yourself and who you have de be developed yourself to become. And you notice there are distinct differences between you and other INFPs. I've noticed that there are strong differences and a huge spectrum within a personality type. And to me, this just reflects one way an INFP can develop. The INFP can develop in other ways and they can have other cognitive function stacks. Take a cognitive function test and you can get different scores. Uh, of course, to some extent, this depends on issues with the test algorithms and with the questions in themselves and with our own ability to score our own behavior. But to some extent, it's true that we have different stacks depending on our development. Now I want to talk about first the ideal INFP because this is just the basic idea of an INFP. They have and uh, typically uh, what we all tend to what we all want to believe is the ideal is balance, balance between all these functions, balance between all these attitudes. And INFP growing up and maturing to become an expert at extroverted thinking with age. And uh, I can see why this is. Uh, important but to me balance is not an ideal in itself to me happiness flow and the good life is the key that's what you want to be aiming towards and I want to talk about the INFP at their best and I want to say first and foremost as an INFP there are certain things that people don't talk about but that are very necessary for example as an I and an intuitive type an introverted type and an intuitive type Introvert intuition is important for balance and for flow. Similarly, introverted feeling and the feeling perceiving needs to be differentiated. Um, INFPs are not just individualistic, unique and culturally aware, but they are also introverted feeling types. They are understanding, they are introspective, they are highly aware of themselves and how they work and who they are. INFPs need to, and when in a hero state, when in an ideal state, be creative, non-conforming, innovative, able to come up with new ideas and to always see another possibility. They need to engage in philosophy and theoretical reasoning, just as the other IN types. 
Now this is not always what happens, because life gets in the way, the stories we tell ourselves get in the way, our script gets in the way, and we have various issues that keep us from getting here. And these issues are kind of what gets us stuck in, for example, this kind of a loop. But perhaps better yet, uh, there are states to be aware of. And I have this label as the evil INFP, but that's not entirely accurate. This is just an, ENF an INFP's cry for help. This is the rival mode or the rival state for the INFP. And you might notice that like when you are in the state and when you try to hold up all these traits and you try to be philosophical, understanding, individualistic, and non-conforming, or as you do this, you rack up stress, perhaps you, perhaps you start getting insecure, perhaps you start feeling worried, perhaps problem, problems occur that kind of hit your flow. And at some point, like for a moment there, we can keep on going and we can keep on holding this up. And we can keep on believing in ourselves and moving forward with determination. But if the problems become too big and if we don't respond to this anxiety and this issue, we tend to become turbulent. Some MTI tests have the turbulent dimension implemented already, and more turbulent INFPs might uh, actually transform. Uh, so, a turbulent INFP, an unstable INFP that, in a ways, give in to their weaker sides and their worse angels of their nature, fall into kind of the negative version of their inferior functions. So, for example, they become restrictive, they uh, believe that tradition demands them to be and act a certain way, they become kind of narrow-minded and uh, tunnel-visioned, uh, they become ob overly obsessed with being strong and they feel weak and they feel that might is necessary to get their will through and they become obsessed with having and being in control. Uh, with thinking and judging acting up, they become overly rule-oriented, they become obsessive about following the rules and making sure that the rules are always upheld. They kind of rig the game against themselves, and this is a common issue. Like They create this game or this system or this set of rules that will keep them from succeeding. And they kind of create this impossible scenario where you can't win. With extroverted sensing acting up, uh, the INFP becomes kind of loud and angry, going from this calm and introspective and philosophical mode to kind of a mode of demanding attention, making a scene, uh, basically doing something to get all eyes on them, to get everyone to hear them, to get everyone to listen. So when INFPs feel neglected and when that anxiety becomes too big, that's when this starts acting up. And altogether, if, <laughs> if, this ha if you have a huge blowout, you can kind of enter into kind of regressive behavior, where you kind of uh, become more childish and more immature. Also, important note, uh, these are the functions of an ESTJ, but an ESTJ uses all of these functions in a healthy and positive manner. An ESTJ loves these functions and uses them in a positive manner, where the INFP uh, uses ESTJ functions in a very negative and hostile manner. Now, when discussing development in INFPs, I came up with four predominant subtypes. And uh, these all correspond to different centers. If you think about your body metaphorically, you could say that the yellow types uh, are strongly aware of their roots, and uh, they are kind of seekers who are peaceful, adaptive, and that go with the flow in some way, that seek to understand themselves and their surroundings and to see different perspectives of life. The red types are the heart types, the people that are full of heart and bravery and who are valiant and who are adventure oriented. And um, looking forward from that, wait a second. Thirdly, you have a gut, which is what you use to make judgments and decisions based on your values or your opinions or your thoughts or logic or a system of rules. And 
Finally, you have the head, which is what you use to evaluate and reflect on the decisions you made and if they were good or bad and what you need to do next and how you need to move forward and why you got where you got and what you need to do differently. Now an INFP with a strong heart will be highly creative. An INFP with a well-developed relationship to their gut will have a higher ability to make decisions and will be a better listener and will be a better reporter. A person that is more in touch with their head will become a more understanding and intrapersonally aware and introspective type. And a person who is aware of their roots will be more philosophically inclined. Now if we look at the rival functions in an INFP, it is the ESTJ functions once again that kind of function as our inner block or rival. And uh, it's the kind of person inside of us that tells us that we can't win or that it's impossible or that we're not good enough or that it's not right. And uh, identifying the blocks in the heart, uh, the, the primary heart block and the way to notice heart blocks is am I afraid? Am I keeping myself from what I want? Am I stopping myself from engaging in a project that I love? Am I keeping myself from engaging in something? And typically, when we do so, we engage in sensing and judging and we start becoming more concerned with routines to kind of uphold and to prevent ourselves from acting on our heart. When we are experiencing a block in our roots, or a sense of rootlessness, uh, when we feel like we've lost our peace and we feel angry and we feel hostile or like uh, we are in a state of war or turmoil, um, we experience a kind of extroverted sensing block. Well, the INFP experiences an extroverted and sensing block. When there, there is a gut block, uh, there is an issue making decisions, you feel you can't trust yourself, you feel uncertain of if you're a good person or not, uh, and you feel, and you become, as a result, more concerned with rules and more receptive to your inner rival. Kind of that insecurity, that anxiety, uh, makes us more respect receptive to the worst sides in ourselves and more prone to acting out on them. Looking at our, finally, our head block, uh, extroverted and thinking is what makes, uh, that gives you the biggest head block. Um, concerns of power and being smart, and uh, with, uh, with uh, being strong tend to keep an INFP from, being, from coming in touch with their own inner truth and with who they are. It kind of keeps them from being true to themselves. Now let's look at the different subtypes, starting with the yellow INFP. Uh, I tried here to develop a standard function hierarchies for the yellow INFP and it lo might look slightly differently uh, depending on your personal development but this is an approximate of a typical development. This is the more philosophically inclined INFP. Uh, considering all of the things they are the most in touch with their own sense of roots, they have a philosophical awareness of who they are and where they are living and what they're doing and where they are going. They understand their life script. They understand life. They accept life. Because they understand truly, they feel a sense of peace and stability. Um, secondly, what I found with the yellow INFP, especially if they are more steady, is that they will have high introverted thinking and a strong introverted thinking, an interesting introverted thinking at that. Uh, and I want to talk about what this kind of entails. Uh, first, starting with the tendency to be perfectionistic, then with uh, overthinking, and then with obsessing about being right. Introverted thinking in the second slot uh, means it's the function you use the second most next to your introverted intuition as a yellow INFP. Uh, and how you use it is kind of in an exaggerate, in an overdrive. It's an overdrive. It's a function that you put in uh, higher gear than it should be in. So it's uh, because it's also related to the head slot, it can uh, manifest itself as a tendency to, be, <laughs> to overthink, to constantly think and to consider different scenarios and to constantly go over something over and over again. Um, without considering new evidence or new information. 
So, introverted thinking for an INFP, what INTPs have, this is, uh, this is what INTJs most commonly have, uh, serves a specific, a specific role for the INFP. Their introverted thinking will make them um, more steady, um, even if that is at the expense of what they find to be true and what they find to be meaningful. It keeps them from self-awareness, it keeps them from uh, truly understanding themselves and other people. Uh, it's kind of like wanting to have lists and data tables and wanting to have maps and charts for everything to understand someone through, rather than to simply listen and to simply understand naturally with introverted feeling. Moving forward to the third slot, the tertiary function in the yellow INFP, uh, the intuitive and judging function comes up in the, this INFP more than, more than usual for the INFP. And intuition and judging tends to drive you to be, in a way, uh, and this is because this is in the tertiary slot, uh, carefully speculative. It makes you take a long time. It's kind of your procrastinating function. When a yellow type procrastinates and thinks uh, I should do it later, uh, they do it with intuitive and judging. Rather than to go on an adventure, they keep planning, they keep speculating on what will happen, and they keep going over on what will happen if I do that decision or that decision or that decision, and really that just keeps them from going on and following their heart. Uh, this process can become kind of indefinite. You keep on doing it and you keep on uh, engaging in this process without actually acting on your heart's true desires. So typically like uh, um, it's here to rein in yourself and uh, this is important to recognize like these functions all come up uh, to balance out your unusually high introvert intuition. Uh, because stability is so important for a yellow INFP. Uh, these functions all serve to make sure you have stability even if it comes at the expense of being indecisive. And that leaves us into the block for the INFP, the inferior function for the yellow INFP. Thinking and judging. The yellow INFP will believe that the system is in the way. The system is against you. The rules are against you. The game is against you. And this kind of keeps you from uh, truly uh, participating in the system. It keeps you from going into and acting on the system. It keeps you from uh, going into and trying to change or fix anything. It keeps you from relations and from decision making and from going for things that you find are important. If you believe something is right or wrong, if your feeling and perceiving gives you a sense of ethics and individuality, thinking and judging is there to say, only if you follow the rules, only if you act on the game and the system, and the system won't let your addicts win. So this INFP is telling themselves a story, rigging their own game with thinking and judging, and they use thinking and judging more than feeling and perceiving to kind of keep it down. Whenever feeling and perceiving comes up, they use thinking and judging to modulate and hold it down. Like, no, I don't act on your individuality, no, don't act on your addicts. Follow the system, follow the rules. So this is the key block for the INFP, the yellow INFP, to get over. If you want to get into flow, you need to get over this block, trust your individuality, and the key reason you don't is because you're scared that it will uh, hurt your stability and your peace that you have at the moment. Let's move on then. Let's move on to the green INFP. The green INFP is the most in touch with feeling and perceiving. Their individuality, their sense of ethics, their sense of what is right and wrong. They listen to the people around them. They observe, they notice things, they spot things, and they see things that come to be important to them. They journal and they gather data and they come to learn a lot of secrets about everyone around them. They come to understand how other people work and this is something they can use ambitiously. Uh, their ambition is to uh, fight for their individuality and for their sense of ethics and to uphold what they believe in, to protect truth, to protect authenticity. Um, now, this is the healthy tendency in this INFP. This INFP is important, uh, concerned with 
having decisiveness, with having a sense of judgment and control over their life and where they go and who they are. Even if it comes at the expense of opening yourself up to anxiety and to worry and fear of loss and a sense of instability or hostility towards the world. Uh, this ethics can make you, in a sense, angry at the world, leading us into the primary block for the feeling and perceiving type, extroverted sensing. <sighs> extroverted sensing is kind of a reality block, like it's a feeling of uh, not feeling seen or heard. It's a feeling of feeling like you're not getting enough attention to what you say. You, you're trying so hard to protect individuality and to fight for what you believe in, but nobody listens to you. Nobody is going to hear you. Nobody is going to care about what you say. And this is kind of the primary block that gets you from participating in the world and from engaging the world and to observing the world and studying it. Uh, the INFP uses extroverted sensing to keep down their introverted intuition. Uh, they keep down their reasoning and their theoretical understanding that will give them a sense of peace and a sense of understanding of uh, an acknowledgement of other people. And in doing so, they become more about showing off and taking over the stage and causing kind of conflict and tension. Now, um, Ideally, what you'll want to do is try to find a way to overcome this block without losing your decisiveness and your determination to do what is right. Um, you can practice this uh, reassurement for yourself. Understanding other people and how they think and who they are and where you are and what kind of world you live in doesn't take away from the need to stand up for what is right. Even if you understand someone, doesn't mean that they aren't still wrong. So don't worry that your philosophy will keep you from pursuing and fighting for what's right. Instead, use it as additional information to fuel and to help you see and show other people the right way forward. Looking at the auxiliary function for the green INFP, uh, is sensing and perceiving us in the second slot for the sign of P. And that's uh, manifested by unusually strong reflexes, instincts and urges and whims, and kind of a tendency to make rash decisions on the fly. When uh, things are happening and when there are things occurring around you, you have a tendency to make decisions that aren't really in line with what you find interesting, what you find good. You tend to go for whatever is offered to you. When things come up, you tend to just jump on it, even if you ideally don't enjoy these things. Um, and this is kind of having your heart in the overdrive. The Green Line Fee has their heart in overdrive. They're constantly concerned about uh, living a rich life and living an active life and living a life of action. And this hyper-concern gets them into sensing and perceiving in a way that uh, kind of keeps them from... Because ideally the INFP should act in contrary to what the world offers them. When the world offers them something, they should find something else. They should always find another alternative. They should be able to be creative and they should love to do the opposite of what they're expected to do. But the green INFP tends to go more in line with what is expected of them. They tend to go more in line with uh, whatever they see that is the closest, the lowest hanging fruit. So uh, notice that tendency and notice how it kind of puts your heart in overdrive. It exposes you to things uh, that you don't want and it exposes you to heartbreak in a way uh, that you don't need. Looking at extroverted feeling, uh, the tertiary function, this is the restraint function, this is the anchor or the uh, kind of thing that chains you or keeps you down. Uh, extroverted feeling and the concern of what other people think of you is the primary thing that keeps you from delaying action and from going for uh, what you believe in and for doing things that are important to you. Uh, you can become overly concerned with what other people think is appropriate or right. You can be overly concerned in this form of INFP with what other people think and what other people believe. And uh, 
typically like this INFP is uh, careful with new people and takes a long time to get to know other people they are they think a lot before they engage other people and if should I get to know that person should I engage them should I talk to them should we be friends should we not be friends uh, there's a tendency to overthink relations in that manner. Third, the blue INFP has introverted feeling as their most developed function, the most visible function. Really, it's the most visible in their expressions, in their actions, in what they do. And uh, this is the INFP concerned with self-discovery, understanding the world from within yourself and using your knowledge about yourself to understand other people as well as animals and nature and all kinds of issues in the world. It's a deeply interpersonal INFP. Um, this INFP has the primarily the block of uh, routines. Um, they can easily get stuck in a rut because they are so concerned with I am this kind of person and so I must always do this and I must always be like that and I must always act in this way. They become overly restrained in themselves and how they express themselves, thinking, oh, to be this kind of person and to hold up this kind of idea I have about myself, I have to be like this all the time. And this also blocks them from their creativity. It, it's, sensing and judging is here to keep their creativity down. Uh, this INFP is the least concerned with being creative and the most concerned with being true to self. So they see, in some ways, being creative as a threat to themselves, being rebellious and going against the flow and creating your own idea or destiny kind of puts you, hurts your stability and your sense of who you are. Now, the important reassurement here is it only shows yourself from a new angle. It only shows a new part of yourself, a part of yourself that you haven't explored yet. And be careful not to get too obsessive in your own identity and be careful to realize that, realize that um, you have many sides to yourself and having many sides to yourself is nothing negative. The second function uh, that comes up, the auxiliary function in this INFP, the blue INFP, is uh, feeling and judging. So it's an INFP that wants to be understood by others. And this is important. This person is obsessing about being understood, obsessing about other people coming to understand them and making themselves understood, trying to communicate overly so, trying overly so to make other people understand who they are and what they feel is right. Uh, and this overdrive comes from feeling and judging. Um, Typically, this, is, this keeps them from feeling and perceiving, it keeps them from listening to other people, and in the concern for showing other people who you are, you kind of miss things about other people that are important. And in doing so, you kind of miss a chance to learn something about yourself, because INFPs typically learn about themselves in relation to other people and to what other people say and do. Um, introverted sensing as the tertiary here. Uh, introverted sensing in the blue INFP serves the role of uh, advocating restraint and self-preservation. Um, it's, uh, it's concerned for the history and since this is the third slot, this is kind of the uh, reason you procrastinate as a blue INFP. Uh, the blue INFP uh, keeps on thinking they have something more to learn. They keep on thinking that there is more to discover, or more to think about something. So they keep mulling over an experience over and over, obsessing about a past event or something that has happened to you. Uh, this INFP will take a long time to reflect on traumas and experiences, both good and bad, and will be overly concerned with preserving rather than enjoying the moment or what can happen next. Finally then, the red INFP, the adventurer INFP, is of course the one with the strongest intuitive and perceiving ability. And, uh, they are the most in touch with their own heart and what they want and what they enjoy and what they love uh, with the source of adventure. They are creative and ingenious, they always see other ways, they always create different options and alternatives. Now the primary block for this INFP is awareness of 
the power and who's in power and who's in control, uh, who are rich and who are strong and who have the power. This INFP kind of feels that because the rich are in rule, because the strong are in rule, because the power is so strong, uh, the rebellion will fail or <laughs> there is a need to rebel to begin with. And um, extroverted thinking is interesting here uh, because it's here to block introverted feeling and the pursuit of self-discovery. This INFP is kind of antagonistic towards the world and towards the people in power and they are concerned with the people in power not and with having power and with being seen and with being wealthy in a way that kind of uh, gets them, f keeps them from, well you should say, understanding who people really are and who people are behind their power, behind the mask and behind all the wealth and behind what they've gathered. Everyone stripped from their role or their position of authority. The key problem for the red INFP is kind of being all over the map. Constantly um, exploring new opportunities, constantly exploring new patterns and investigating the environment and seeing new reasons for uh, new reasons behind what people do and what's happening around them. Reading in power structures, reading in actions and crimes and seeing uh, who's behind what's happening around them. Seeing the mastermind behind everything that's happening around them. Um, they're kind of insecure about change. Uh, and this, of course, is, since it is in the second slot, is in overdrive. So this is a person obsessing about uh, what's possible and what could happen next. Obsessing about different ways to see the situations, obsessed about always being everywhere at once and always having every role and occupying every possibility and always acting on every opportunity. They don't want to miss out on anything. And uh, this is, ex is exhausting to say the least for an INFP since it comes from the extroversion rather than the introversion. And it keeps them from reflecting on why they do what they do and why they got the opportunities they did and why things happened the way they did. Uh, and uh, this keeps them from stability and from steadiness and from a sense of calm. So recognize that and find ways to balance yourself in this. With finally the third slot, thinking and perceiving, uh, it's a tendency to postpone problem solving and to uh, take too long to diagnose the situation and why things happened the way they did and what caused an event to happen in the way it did. Um, it's uh, a lot about making sure you take time to do something the right way. Finally, back again to the ideal INFP. What I've shown you is that this is the ideal for the INFP, like this is who the INFP is at best, but nobody can be at best all the time. Things happen, we get stressed out, we get overwhelmed, things happen. And the four patterns that I outlined, the yellow, red, green and blue, tend to be, tend to stick for a reason. The blue sticks because for a long time sometimes we have to work hard to study and to master ourselves and to become good at something. Or if we are in the green path, often success in careers or in an ambition or in what you believe is right takes a long time and hard work. And often the adventure that you started on might have felt short when you started it, but it became a lot. It became a long journey. Uh, and it had a lot of different uh, roads and different ways to take. So it can become something we get stuck in or something that becomes a lot more permanent. Lastly, of course, the yellow path can also become something we become stuck in. The pursuit of self-discovery and being a seeker and uh, going and seeking understanding and seeking to find out why we are here and what we're doing here. Uh, those questions can become something we find ourselves thinking about for a long time. And when we are stuck in one of these four archetypes or when we are keening on and focusing on it for a while, that's when these kinds of function hierarchies are established. That's when uh, we start using these unusual functions to modulate ourselves and our behavior. Now finally, why should you 
believe in these hierarchies? Why not just say every INFP is like this? Why not just say this is how every INFP is and everyone that isn't, they're not the right type or there's something wrong? Well, you know yourself that when you've been tired, when you've been angry, you haven't been yourself. And when you hear all these definitions tossed out about what an INFP is, uh, there are so many definitions, there are so many different ways to see it. But in the end, what I found, what we should be talking about is not what definitions to use uh, as much as which definition is best, which provides the most understanding. And I found that these newer definitions and these improved uh, hierarchies provide a deeper understanding into the INFP and a critique against the idea that there can only be 16 types or 16 different ways to develop yourself and how you think and how you act. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope to see you guys tomorrow.